All right, so we should be going live any second now. We've got that limbo period where we look like we're going live. We might be live, but I'm not sure because it's setting up the webinar. And uh, it will tell me in just a second. And oh, there we go. We're officially live. So let me do some housekeeping before we actually get started, you guys, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Now, when I'm talking, if you guys have your microphones open and you, um, even if you just do a, <laughs> it will actually grab my microphone away and it will do your guys's microphone and then nobody can hear me. So um, please, please, please keep your microphones muted if at all possible. Does that mean you can never speak? Absolutely not. I am wonderful at letting you guys have time to speak. Um, but in, when I'm in the middle of teaching, it's really hard if you're grabbing the microphone from me. And uh, people get a little irritated if they uh, can't hear me talk. <laughs> so, so you guys just mind your microphones and make sure that they are muted. Um, and if you do want to speak, um, the best time to uh, ask to speak is... Uh, when I'm uh, not screen sharing anymore and I'm jumped in and I, I see all of you guys on the screen, that's the best way to get my attention. And actually, sometimes you have to do this because <laughs> I don't always see this. <laughs> Some people do just like this and sometimes I don't see it because I'm real busy. So you may have to flag me down, get the red flags and the big lights. That, like they do at the airport and stuff and flag me down. But um, I promise I'm, I am trying to watch out for you guys if you do have questions, but you may have to work a little bit harder to get my attention, especially if I'm in that zone where I'm really focused on what I'm teaching. I don't quite see um, everybody when they want to speak. Um, so wait till I get back to the where I have everybody on screen. That's the best time to ask questions. And, uh, and then if it's not pertaining to exactly what we're doing at the moment, Please write it down in your parking lot, and I'm going to show you guys. I already have my parking lot ready. Let me, let me get there so I can show it to you. So my parking lot is ready. I always have a parking lot so that if there are any issues that come up that I need to remember or I need to talk to you about later or I have, you know, have to follow up a little bit later, then I write it down in my parking lot so that I don't interrupt the flow of what we're teaching in the moment, okay? So make sure you've got those parking lots ready, guys. And if it's something that I feel like we can push it until the end, don't get your feelings hurt. We'll push it to the end. I'll write it down. You write it down. And we'll both try to deal with it at the end of the training. Okay? So any questions before we get started? Hey, Bonnie. Kanan's like ready, you guys. He was messaging me since Friday. He was like, is the registration up yet? Is it up yet? Is it up yet? It's like every hour. <laughs> well, because what happened also is that it was really difficult this time. Mm -hmm. on, on the cell phone, it wouldn't it wouldn't register at all. And even on my desktop, it took a really long time until I was able to do that. Yeah, it, it had a text issue. Um, this is a website that's been built for about almost a year now. Um, well, less than a year, about eight months. And uh, it had the old text in it. And so the old text, because of some new changes they made, it was causing the text to line up wrong. So uh, they gave me some instructions on how to fix that. So I just went in right after the meeting this morning and adjusted the first box. So if you can test that for me to see if that first box with the text is I just sent you back a response. It looked fine, it, but but the first two boot camps loaded really fast. And then it took almost two minutes for the rest of, this, of the page to load. Okay. So they need to work on that load speed. Okay, that's great. I'll let them know that too. Thank you very much. You're um, welcome. It's in, your, it's, in your, it's in your messages. Awesome, thank you. David, question, question uh, Has Rachel got our, our dinner ready yet? I don't know, but I'm hungry. So Rachel, like, have you got our oh, dinner ready yet? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. So let's talk about Facebook organic marketing. So is anybody in here using Facebook organic marketing um, right now? So I've got Bridget, I've got Kanan. No, not really. Man, this is an untapped resource, you guys, because there's so many ways that you can organically market anything, not just Builder All, but anything. Um, and you don't have to pay a dime. It does take time, though. And like anything that you're going to be doing online, you're either going to invest time or you're going to invest money, and sometimes both. But it's going to be either time or money, right? 
So this one is the organic method. So instead of investing money, you're going to invest time. So this takes a little bit longer than it does if you're just going to buy Facebook ads or buy YouTube ads or buy Google ads. It just takes a while. But once you get good at it, you can do it pretty quickly. And mine, I actually set up so that I've got it organized by um, weekday. So I can go through and post to my groups that I want to post to every single day really quickly. Um, and it's, it's not too, too much of a hassle to do every single day. I'm going to teach you how I stay organized when I do the organic marketing as well. So the hope is that when we're done, you'll have some really good organic marketing tools that you can use and also some strategy to get it done as quickly as possible, as effective as possible, and also to avoid getting shut down by uh, Facebook. Because one of the big things you don't want to do is actually just copy and paste and go paste, next group, paste, next group, paste, next group, paste. If you do that, you're, you're pretty much guaranteeing that you're going to get shut down by Facebook because they're seeing you as like a spammer. So we're going to teach you some methods so that you're not seen by Facebook as a spammer and you can um, get some stuff done pretty well. OK, so the first thing we're going to talk about today and let me go to my list so I can stay on my list. And we're going to talk about Facebook in terms of what's the difference between a page and a group. So does anybody have an idea how you can explain what the difference is between a page and a group? Actually, there's three different things. A profile, a page, and a group. Chip? Oh, I can't hear you. You're, let, me, let me unmute you. Okay, there we go. The um, profile is your personal information. It's the foundation on which anything else is built. You're not really supposed to be selling anything from your profile. A page, and you can have any number of pages, is a Facebook area designed for a specific purpose, like Builderall, or in my case, Builderall Atlantic. Um, and you can uh, post things there that just go to that group, um, and some people will see them. All the people who are subscribed to you never see anything. Only some of them see what you, you do. Now, a group um, is a, can be off of a page, and it's a collection of people that have to be um, entered into your group. Um, I have a group, Theater Teachers Conspiracy, um, and I have three entry questions that they have to answer because I don't want students in there. I just want the teachers. Um, and then I have to separately on a Google sheet or something, write down the answers if I, cause I ask for email, uh, as one of the questions and that way I can compile those. Um, is that awesome. clear? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So your personal profile is the profile where you're going to put your personal information. You're going to share it with family and friends. Um, is that an area that you should never promote builder all? Wow, you guys are all like, I don't know, Shelly. Well, Eric says, yes, you should always promote it there. And Facebook says, no, you probably shouldn't. So it's somewhere in the gray. Yeah, it's somewhere in the gray. I, I promote Builderall on my personal profile, but I don't do it a lot. So I may do it maybe once every month or two. I may put another post to just let my friends, family, and everything know that, hey, there's this great thing called Builderall, and I'm in it, and I'm promoting it, and I love it. And, uh, and then if they want to join, they can. If they don't want to join, they don't have to. We all know that it's the hardest sometimes to promote to family and friends, right? Because they're the ones that, even though they love us, they're kind of like the naysayers, right? The negative Nellies. They're the ones that say, why are you doing that? Why don't you go get a job and get a full-time job? Uh, Judy, you got a question or a comment? No, I was waving to Shawana. Oh. Hey, hey, Shawana. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I promote there, but I do it very little because of that fact that the, the family, sometimes family and friends can be the big, biggest negative Nellies. And they're not always negative because they don't love you. They are still in that mindset of 40 hours a week and a paycheck, right? And anything other than that, you, you must be doing something wrong and you're doomed to fail. 
And just to give you an example, when I post anything up about Builderall on my profile, my dad immediately contacts me and says, ride that pony as long as you, sh you can, Shelly, because you never know <laughs> when it's going to stop. <laughs> and I just crack up because he just doesn't have any concept that even if Builderall fails, I'm not going to be able to fail because I have so many tools behind me not just with Builderall, but the things that I've learned working with Builderall and building with Builderall, that I can pick up my, my Legos and move to another place really, really easy, even if it was a total failure of Builderall, because there's so many things you learn in the process of building with these tools. So um, it's actually kind of funny how friends and family can be if you start posting on your personal profile. But you should be posting on your personal profile. Every once in a while, you should because that is a place where you might pick up some people that are interested in Builderall. Um, so you don't have to post there all the time, but you can post and you can let them know what you're doing. The next one is uh, a group. And I've got, oh my gosh, I've got so many groups. And that is a great way to build organic, uh, 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 organic following is building groups. So you can build these groups that are set up so that people can join just by clicking the join button. You can set up these groups so that people can join by requesting, or you can set up groups that are secret. And the only way they get in is if you put them in. Okay, so there's a group that they can join automatically. All they gotta do is click join. A group where they click join, but they gotta be approved by you. Or a secret group where they only get in if you let them in, if you actually, uh, give them the link and uh, join them yourself because they will never be able to find that group by themselves. Now, which do you think is the most valuable? Um, the join without having to do anything except click the join button. Those are amazingly huge and there's a bunch of posts in there. So there's a bunch of noise in there. So those are not really the best ones for you to create because there's so much noise, but you can still create them because you own the group. So when you create that group, guess what you get as the owner? You get the cover art that's on that Facebook group. That is fabulous organic marketing right there. Because then everybody that wants to join that group, you can advertise your business or product right there. You can also charge people. If your group is big enough, you can actually say, hey, rent this space for $25. And you can put their image up there for them to be able to advertise their group and you're making some money okay so there's a couple ways you can do that the groups where people have to click the join button and you have to approve them those are to me the best ones because you can not only use that space as a organic marketing area at the top right the cover art but you can also control who comes into that group and who doesn't you have the ability to boot them if they're not behaving. Um, you can set some rules for that group. You can with the other group, but it's not as easy to manage if there's thousands and thousands of people in there. But you can also target specific people. So let's say I have a group and I want to do a group on underwater basket weaving, which is my favorite thing to do. So I'm going to create a group on underwater basket weaving. And I'm going to allow people to join. But when they click the join button, they have to answer three questions. And those three questions might be, do you like underwater basket weaving? Do you have any experience with underwater basket weaving? What's your email so we can add you to our email list? And you'll have to confirm once you're added to our email list, right? So now we're creating a situation where we've got a very targeted niche group. And we know exactly the people that are in that group and exactly how to market to them right? Because we know exactly who they are. So for underwater basket weaving, weaving people, we might be able to market um, the magazine app, right? Because they would, there would be people in there that would maybe want to build a magazine on underwater basket weaving, right? We might want to do a website because they want to do training for people on how to do underwater basket weaving. So we could throw some of those marketing things into that group that specifically fits that group. Right? Everybody with me so far? Yeah? So let's check that out. Um, I'm going to show you a couple ways to find some of these groups so you can see exactly how this is done. So I'm going to uh, share my screen and I'm going to go to Facebook. 
And when I go to Facebook, there are some uh, great tools inside of Facebook to be able to find all of these types of groups and um, groups that I'm talking about and pages. So when I go up to the very top and do search, I'm going to type in underwater basket weaving. Wow, that's easy. And I'm just going to hit enter. And I want you to notice that all across the top here, I've got all different searches that I can look at. The marketplace, posts, people, photos, videos. The ones that I'm interested in are the pages and the groups. So if I found some groups that are in underwater basket weaving, and maybe I want to share my page or my group, if I'm allowed to, I might be able to do that. So let's check the groups. And here's all my underwater basket weaving groups right here. And I can take a look at these groups. And if I find one that would allow me to post into that group and share maybe my page or my group, I got somebody that there, let me see if I got it. Okay, I got it. Um, if I've got a group that will allow me to post my page or my group in there, I could join them and then actually post my page or my group. Now, is that what I would do like right away? Would I join and then start putting my page and my group in there? Would that be a good idea? Let me look at your eyeballs. Would that be a really good idea? I found this great underwater basket weaving group, so I'm going to give them the link to my group so I can promote the magazine out. Should I do that? Nah, why not? David, why not? Well, if I was the group manager, I would kick a person straight away. Right, because they're Depend not. Depends <laughs> on on the rules of the group as well. Don't forget. But it's straight away. People will say, oh, here's a spammer. He's straight away in. He's not even in a, a day and he's spamming us already. So, yeah, out you go. Good luck. There you go. That's exactly it. If you jump right into a group. And you start promoting your stuff and your product um, right away. Um, what's going to happen is you're going to be seen as exactly what David said, a spammer. And either you're going to get booted. If you were in my group, you get booted. Um, or people are going to, like, not even begin to pay attention to any of your, of your posts. So if you jump into a group like that, um, you should actually try to be a participant in the group and provide value. So if you're in an underwater basket weaving group, tell them something about underwater basket weaving that um, you like that, or that you do or a technique that you do. Um, I'll give you a perfect example, you guys. I am an amputee, right? I've had my right leg amputated above the knee on the right side. Um, and so I'm in a bunch of amputee groups. And I've contributed heavily to those groups. We talk a lot about um, phantom pain and what it's like to get a prosthetic for the first time and how long does it take for the, the wound to heal right after surgery. All of those things are things that I jump in and talk about. But you know I take advantage of being in that group as well to talk about Builderall. And I say things like I'm so excited that I had my amputation because that gave me the freedom to work with this incredible company where I can build websites and mobile apps and chatbots and earn almost as much money or more money than if I was working my regular job. So just that little post right there, after participating, you'll have people that will jump in and go, hey, I'm interested in that. Um, so you're a participant in the group. And if you can slide it in without being spammy, slide it in, right? But you need to give value and you need to be a participant in the group before you start sharing your links or sharing information or sharing a link to a group, um, all of that's really important. So I'll give you some ideas on the way I started uh, participating in the groups. I joined a bunch of work from home groups, uh, stay at home mom groups, um, entrepreneur groups, build a business group, um, all that kind of stuff. I joined many, many, many groups. And what I did was I created uh, short videos on how to do basic tasks that any business builder would be able to do or would need to know. So um, I've shared with you guys uh, before this technique, I would do something like a short video on how to do control C and control V, which is copy and paste. 
And that copy and paste video was maybe a two and a half minute video. Uh, maybe with the way I teach, it was three and a half minutes. <laughs> and I would post the video, but always at the end of the video, I'd say, if you want more tips and tricks on how to streamline your business and use really cool tools to make it make you work smarter rather than harder, just private message me and I'll be glad to share some more with you. And every single time I put videos up like that, I would get people that would private message me. So it's really a matter of, and I never said builder all or join my team or anything like that. So um, this was a really effective technique for me. And when I first started, that's actually why I'm still in the top uh, 12 affiliates for the entire company, like of all time, is because that's the method I started with and it grew me really, really fast. Um, it takes time because I don't post the same video every single group every single day. So I have many videos that I use and I'll pull in different videos. So Facebook can't see me um, pasting the same thing in there. Um, and I create uh, a situation where it's, it's different. So if people are members of the same groups that I am. They're not seeing the same content. So I don't, I don't put the copy and paste video in five different groups on the same day. I have five different videos because I've shot them already. And I put them into the groups. Uh, each group gets a different video. Okay. And those are real easy to shoot. You can do copy and paste. You can do control A, what that does, control Z. You can do, I did a, a couple of videos on like how to do windows side by side. So you can work in the same video the same windows at the same time. I did um, how to use bookmarks and bookmark uh, toolbar. Um, I showed them how to take the uh, taskbar at the bottom of the screen and put it on the side or at the top. Um, so there's a lot of different things that I showed uh, users how to do to make their life a little bit easier on a PC. And, uh, and then I had that bank of videos. It took me about two hours to shoot uh, probably about 20, 25 videos. And then out of those 25 videos, I actually use those to put into groups to share. And I never put the same videos in all of the groups that I did for that day. So if Chip was a member of the same group as me, um, if he was in one group, he might see the control C, control V video. If he was in another group uh, with me, he might see the um, windows side by side. So I was real picky about not putting the same things in. Um, also, I did a generic posts where I would just instead of giving value or um, or promoting something of mine, I would ask a question. That's always a really good way to get engagement in any posts that you put in the group. So you might say something like, does anyone know of a really good autoresponder out there that has unlimited subscribers and unlimited emails to go out? And you get a bunch of comments, right? And, uh, and then in the middle of it, you can say, I've got one that does have unlimited uh, emails and unlimited subscribers, but I thought there would be more out there that would offer that, right? So you're kind of you're leading them into asking you, well, what do you have? What do you use that's unlimited? And once they ask that question, you, you, you can then share BuilderAll with them. So you can ask questions and get engagement. You can create videos to teach them how to do something and at the end, invite them to ask you for more and that creates engagement. Um, and then you can just provide value as you find it. Um, I love some of the posts that I do sometimes where I do obscure holidays. Um, you guys might have seen about maybe a month back where I posted about the Sea Monkey Day, National Sea Monkey Day. So I shared that in some of the groups and that was absolutely hilarious how much response that got. So just be um, just be there, be present, be participative in all the groups. And it doesn't always have to be a promotion when you participate in the groups. OK, that's huge. Shelly. So, yeah, go ahead, Bonnie. So do you find you post it on your your business page or your personal page and you share it into these other uh, into the other pages or groups or do you just just put it in in just directly i actually put it in just directly sharing we'll talk about in a little bit but okay. i actually actively participate without sharing in those groups um because there's a lot of groups that won't let you do that they'll they'll 
they'll get upset because they consider that like promoting your group. So you just have to be really careful and look at the rules really carefully. So you want to start off by just posting directly into that group and making sure that you understand the rules completely before you actually try to share anything, right? I have a lot of groups that I could share into other groups um, by just doing a share. The other thing is when you share a group, right? If it's a closed group where they have to join, they won't see the message anyway. If you share a page, it's better. But if you share a group that's closed, we have that, that problem in the 90 day challenge that we've got. Some people don't realize that if they're inside of a group and they share that uh, post that from the group, that's a closed group. Um, we that are not a member of the group can't see it. Okay, so always share. Um, it's easier to share from a page actually than it is a closed group, but always start off giving your value. Good. Post directly into that group. So, so when I'm posting from my page now and I'm sharing it into our 90 day group and then people click on it and they go back to my page, then they can share it through my page, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. But like I've got closed groups, like I've got a team awesome group, which is my builder all team. And if I tried to share a post into the 90 day challenge, anybody that was not a member of that group would not be able to see the post. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's do um, a search for some more groups that you might like to look at. So um, we did underwater basket weaving. Let's do some, uh, some good ones like stay at home moms. So here I've got stay at home moms and I've got groups chosen. So it's giving me lots and lots of stay at home mom groups. These are perfect to um, participate in and promote builder all yet, right? And promote in many different ways. So stay at home moms is a really great one. You can see this one has 47,000 members and they have 10 plus posts a day. Let me tell you a little bit about that kind of group, okay? This kind of group is huge. And when they have more than 10 posts a day, that means there's probably a lot of noise in that group, a whole lot of noise in that group. So how do you get seen above everybody else? So let's right click and open it in a new link or a new window. And these uh, posts, it looks like they have 76 new posts every single day. So what you would do is you would definitely read the rules to make sure that you understand completely what the rules are. And if you can abide by the rules, then you go ahead and click the join group. Okay, so I'm going to join and I'm going to do it under my Shelly Turner profile. And it says, are you stay at home mom? So are you stay at home mom over the age of 18? Um, no. Yeah, I guess I am. I'm a stay at home mom. I'm just my my children are grown. Do you agree to the group rules? Yes. If your request is requested is denied, check your message requests or filter messages from us. Fabulous. All right, so I just submitted to be able to join that group. So now I have to wait until the admins actually look at the request. And sometimes they can take a day, a minute, an hour, a day, a week to approve. It just depends on how active the uh, admins are. But as you can see right now, I'm showing this pending, okay? So once I'm approved, I need to go in there and actually look at the post and see what kind of things people are posting. And then stay with, kind of within those guidelines of what people are posting. But I will tell you that if they allow you to go live to the group, so you need to read the um, rules really carefully. If they allow you to go live to the group, go live. Go live at least once a week, not more than that, because it's then it's overkill. But go live once a week. Tell tell them a life story. Um, tell them a funny story. Um, what whatever you want to do, but go live, give value, have fun, and that's going to make you stand out in the crowd. Okay. If you're too worried about going live, then share a video because video is the next best thing. Okay. So go live is first. Sharing a video is second. Um, then the next best thing is posting some kind of image and quotes do actually really well. So if you've got access to some quotes, grab some good quotes, make a comment about the quote and post that. And then the last thing is just a plain old ordinary text post. Okay. 
So that's the order of value is live video. Um, people stop and watch for live videos. I even catch myself and I know that's the way to catch them, right? Live video, then a re pre recorded video, then a image post, and then text post, right? Okay, so keep that order so you know which ones are best. Make sure that you read the um, rules really, really carefully. And right here, we've got the rules. It says upon entering the group, go to our announcement section and agree to our rules. And then here are the rules. So you want to click that and look at them very, very carefully to make sure that you don't break the rules. But I want to um, I want to impress upon you one thing. Um, I'm not a rule breaker. I don't like to break rules. I'm like I'm allergic to breaking the rules. Every once in a while, I break the rules. <laughs> it's just you can look at all of these groups and, and see all of the rules, but you're going to be involved in so many groups. I mean, I'm a member of over 200 groups, so I can't remember all the rules for every single group. So guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to get kicked out. You are going to get kicked out. It is nothing to stress about. It was a mistake that you made. OK, I made that mistake. Remember, in this business, we fail forward, right? So if you get kicked out, you just learned a valuable lesson. Whoops, I should have looked at the terms again before I posted in that group, right? And I'll, I'll teach you some ways that you can um, record what you can and can't do in the group when we start talking about saving these groups, okay? So let's take a look at, uh, does anybody have any questions so far? No? All right, so I talked to you about finding groups. Now let's talk about finding pages because pages are pretty cool too. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And let's take a look at some stay-at-home mom pages. So instead of the group area, I'm gonna go into the pages area. And you can see that now I've got a bunch of pages, right? And I can choose to like any of these pages. And if I like them, I can actually go in and take a look at them. And you'll see um, many different polls. So this is successful stay-at-home moms. They made a post. They've uh, got some 1.5 thousand comments. So my guess is you could probably comment on there too. Um, you want to just kind of look at all the posts and see if you can participate on that page and make comments that might prompt that person or people that are commenting to actually um, want to know more from you. So pages are a little bit more difficult in my mind because um, these are kind of um, one dimensional where the person that owns the page is the one mostly that gets the post and then everybody else responds. Um, so we'll learn how to make our own pages and we get to be the master of all we survey on our own pages. OK, so to me, the best place is to do some organic marketing for for uh, places that we don't own ourselves are groups. Definitely groups. OK. And you want to make sure you're adding value all the time, um, way before you ever add anything that's a link to anything that you want to sell. Okay. All right. Let me stop and see if anybody has any questions so far. Chip? Um, I want to mention something I found confusing when I was poking around uh, reading other stuff. And that's a fan page versus a business page versus a page. And I eventually figured out they're all the same. Yeah, they are. They're all the same. Um, there's only a couple of differences when you're setting them up. It might ask you a little bit different information when you're setting them up. So a fan page is like a celebrity type page. So it's going to ask for like a website and do you have a store to sell merchandise and blah, blah, blah. And then if it's a business page, it's going to ask you business hours and where's your location and stuff like that. So that's really the only difference is during the setup, it will ask you a different series of questions. Um, to be able to set up your page. But as far as the format of the page, it's exactly the same as far as you are the one that gets to post to it and everybody else then responds to your posts. Okay. Also, um, you can actually, uh, I think that you can see pages without having to be logged into Facebook. Whereas if you go into a group, you have to be logged in to be able to see a group. Okay. All right, um, any other questions? That was a really good one, Chip. All right, so let's talk about... Uh, Shelly, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Terry. I had a question. Um, uh -huh. 
when it comes to like the fan page, uh, the business page, and I understand that because they, um, when it's a business page, they give you a chance to, uh, I guess, Facebook always invites you to boost the page, so, you know, those posts right. like that. But um, what I did want to know, you know, say like, for instance, when you have a page or when you have a group, you can invite someone to like that page. Can you invite people that you are not friends with to like that page, or does it have to be people that you are friends with? Everybody that's on your list to invite are people that you're already connected as a friend. Okay. Now, the other thing is, because I've been working with that, trying to find a way around this, so thank you. The other thing is, is if um, it's not your page, but you are a member, you know, you've liked that page, one thing I don't know because I haven't tried it, can you invite someone else to like that page? Or can you, I know you can invite people to join a group, but can you invite someone else to like that page even though it's not your page? No. Okay, okay, okay. Not that I've been that, trying to figure those things. I do it, I don't, yeah, I don't think you can do that. I don't think you can invite someone to like somebody else's page. That's but I can't. Can. You could always send them the link. Yes. And say, hey, here's the link. Go ahead and like this page. But I don't think there's a way to invite someone to like a page that's not your page. Okay, because I've been work. I, I've been working on using that as a way to draw traffic. And what I have been doing is I make a comment as far as a text, and I'll post it on my page, or either I'll, you know just post it on in a group that I'm a part of, mm -hmm. something like that to uh, draw attention. Okay. So, Thank you. so, any other questions about the groups and pages, and then your personal profile? I have a question. Okay, go ahead. I have a question. Let me see if I can say okay. your name. Bill Bil Kisu. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. My name is Bill Kisu from Nigeria. This is. My first time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so my question is, what I've noticed is that with a page, it's like really very difficult. So you have to pay, but you have only like one like, like it's, it's, it's like nobody's actually seeing the page. <laughs> so like, do I really need to, to, to like buy the traffic before people can see my page? No, um, no, no, no. What you, what you want to do, we'll talk about this in just a few minutes when we talk about creating pages. That actually is a really good question because when you create a page, you want to be looking at keywords, um, target words that you want to name your page so that as people are searching for places to uh, join or look at or be a part of, if you've got keywords in your name, they're going to be able to find you. Um, if you notice, when I typed in underwater basket weaving, we found all kinds of pages and groups that were on underwater basket weaving. So if we wanted to find that, we could find that very easily because the pages and the groups were named that. So if you want to do something from work from home or stay at home moms or entrepreneurs, then you should have those keywords in there. The next thing is that it's okay if you go into some of those groups, make sure you look at their, um, their rules. But if they allow you to share links to other pages or groups, then you can do that occasionally, not often, but occasionally. So you need to make sure that you're looking at their rules as well. OK. Is that good? OK, now don't boost. Um, I've boosted before and it was a waste of money. It, they'll, they'll get you every time, right? They'll say you can boost this post for your uh, page for five dollars or for ten dollars or we'll give you a $10 credit if you spend $10. Um, and every time I've boosted, I've never gotten as good a result as if I just make sure that I've got good keywords in my group and then uh, even get to share the group inside of other groups um, or share the page inside of other, uh, other groups. Uh, so it's, it's um, to me, boosting is not, not that good of a deal. Okay? All right, good. Um, so let's talk about no, now that me, Shelly, Dominic had a question. Oh, okay. Dominic, were you flagging me down, dude? Where's Dominic? Oh, there he is. I'm I'm sitting in the dark. Sorry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, 
I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pulling a Tyree. I'm doing my Secret Service duty. All right, uh, good. I, I have, I, <laughs> now, I have found uh, when I have boosted, and I agree with you, not very good results. Anybody who interacts with a, a post that I've boosted, I am able to ask them to come and like my page. Yes, yes, that's that is a that's true. That's true. Um, anybody that interacts with your page, you can ask them to like your page. Um, uh, and that's another really important thing is when we talk about um, posting inside of somebody else's page or somebody else's group. Okay. What's going to happen is now you're going to get notifications when other people interact with that same post, whether it's in a page or in a group. So now you've got um, information coming back to you in the form of your notifications. So if you say something like, um, let's see, I'm on uh, Davida's group and, uh, and I saw that she had a great post and all I typed in was great post. Right? That's all I typed in. Everybody from then on is going to get a notification or I'm going to get a notification of everybody that posts on there from then on. So if there's a lot of interaction, I can jump in there and interact some more. Right. That's where you want to be is if you're getting a lot of interaction on a post. You want to be in there contributing and giving value so they see your name over and over and over again. Now, that doesn't mean that you do great posts and then a couple of things down, you do great posts again. <laughs> and a couple of things down, you do great posts again. You need to add value, right? But keep participating and keep being seen in those groups and keep adding value so that your name keeps appearing. People keep seeing it. And you are starting to be seen as the expert and the authority. It's not that hard to do, actually. Um, and you guys probably see me do it quite a bit in a lot of groups where I will participate in groups and I won't talk anything about Build Raw. I'll talk about um, whatever the, the group is about. Um, it might be entrepreneurship. So I might do a quick video about what it's like to be an entrepreneur. And then I might post um, a, a quick a little article, you know, 100 words or less of what I think about entrepreneurship. And then if they ask about success, I'll, I'll type in about my success. Um, and then if there's posts that are, have a lot of engagement, I'll jump into those posts and type some more. Um, and it's all on the fly stuff. You guys need to learn how to do definitely stuff on the fly. Get, get your mind out of that copy and paste thing. And, uh, and be participative so they can actually see you participating. They can see the value that you're adding and they will remember your name. I mean, Shelly Turner is not that memorable of a name. It's just not. It's very average, right? But um, I, I get remembered because I'm there. I'm present. I'm giving value and I'm, I'm always there, right? I'm always there. People ask me all the time, are there 10 of you? Um, there are not 10 of me. Uh, but I'm always there posting. Tyree? Um, when posting in, in something, when I, when one of the things I did with posting so that I can keep my name fresh in a group, on a weekend, I would do it like, I would get five different quotes. Mm -hmm. And what I would do is it's a process I'll follow. Uh, what, the pro, what the quote was about, who made the quote, and how I relate the quote, the quote to me and what I did. I got five of those, and I posted one, uh, posted one, a different one in each group da daily. You know, a different one. You know how you said when you were, uh, you wouldn't post the same video every day. Why well, right. didn't post the same video every day? I rotated the the quotes in different groups, and that daily got a lot of attention to me. And without me even promoting what I was about, I just related how I use how I use that quote to help me with whatever I was doing. And sometime I would also say if I was doing such and such, I would, you know, say for instance, the, another person in that group, uh, whatever topic or whatever product they were promoting, I would mm -hmm. find the most promoted product because I know that's what's gonna attract a lot of traffic. And mm -hmm. I would say how I would relate it or how I would use it to help me pr uh, use that product. So that's some of the things that I did to draw a lot of traffic and it created a lot of an avenue for me to have a lot of friends. And from that, I was able to get a lot of leads. Right. I absolutely agree. Being present and seen it to me is more valuable. Um, it's to me, it's got equal value as the value that you give in the group. 
right? You've got value that you give, but to be seen consistently is just as valuable in my mind. Because if you're giving value, they're going to relate it to your name. And together, that creates a situation where you're seen as the expert and you're authentic and you're present and you're there. You're the one that they're going to be contacting when they have a question. Yes, because see what I did, I, I always look and see who was successful as far as quoting. So I got a quote and, I, and what it was about. I said what the quote was about, but my main focus to take the focus off of me was to put it on the person that made the quote. For instance, like a well-known person, for instance, someone like Napoleon Hill. So what my quote was about, who wrote the quote, and then how I related, who, what, and how. That was my template to how I use that. And uh, without bringing the total attention to myself, it brought attention to the quote and the person, but it kept me in front of people and what I was about. That's that's fabulous. I, I think that's a fabulous way to do it. Um, Linda, did you have a question or a comment? I did. Hi, Shelly. Um, I find this interesting. I have been doing um, organic optimization for over 20 years, but not in social media. So I'm loving mm -hmm. this. But I do, I, I have one question to ask some, about some that Therese said earlier. Um, when you're sending, if you're inviting someone mm -hmm. and they accept, are they able, once they accept, to then extend and send an invite out on your page? Or does it end there? I know there's, a, there's a couple you. Yeah, there's a couple different ways. Um, you can ask someone to like your page, and that's page based. And then you can, if you have a group, you can invite someone to join the group if you own the group. But I don't think that anyone in the group can invite another person. If it, I, I don't think that's possible. Now you can give them the link if it's a if it's a group where they can find it. So in other words, it's not a secret group. You can give them the link and then they could join. But I, I don't think for a group you can invite someone to to join if you don't own the group. Okay, thank you. Okay, that was a great question. Any other questions, you guys, or comments, Gabriel? Can you hear me now? I can. All right, good. How are you? I'm doing great. It's so great to be back with you guys. <laughs> I missed you and I missed everybody, but we're here. So, hey. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, I have a few questions and I'm not sure if I'm going to go uh, a little bit advanced or uh, thinking outside the box here. Uh, can we delegate a lot of this stuff? Because running a business, I got a lot of things going on. <laughs> so uh, is there any way we can delegate this to a v virtual assistant and train them on certain topics? And hey, this is the what we kind of want to get done, the overall spectrum, and then they'll get it, they'll get, they'll move with the motion, in other words, later on, right? We'll collaborate absolutely. and make this, uh, you know, so is the answer yes or no? <laughs> the answer is absolutely yes. I have two VAs, and they I, they do really help me with um, a lot of what I do on uh, organic methods, including Facebook and YouTube. Um, so I can give them access to my Facebook account, and I, I do trust them so that I can do that. You definitely don't want to share with anybody unless you really do trust them. But they do a great job of uh, posting for me. And they've got my style down pat. You know, I'm, I'm the, the person that types in an uh, answer and then smiley face and a winky face. And uh, they're always good at, at making it look like it's actually me that's posting. So I guess in actuality, there really are three of me because they're actually helping me post and keep things updated. Um, and then I have a very organized system of posting. So you guys are going to get to learn that tomorrow. So you guys can see exactly how I keep track of everything that I'm posting so that I know what groups I'm posting in, what groups I've already posted in, and also what I'm allowed to post and what I'm not allowed to post. Because there are some groups where you can do this, but you can't do that. So I'm going to show you how I set that up and also how I keep track of what groups I've joined, what groups are pending, and then, of course, the ones that are approved and how do I keep track of, of what days do I post. Okay, so, so you guys have seen that already. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry I was going to say some of you guys have seen that already, but I'm going to go through it again. Okay. Uh, so in other words, 
Uh, we can delegate the entire process, finding the groups, uh, mm -hmm. posting in the groups, joining the groups, uh, reading the rules, etc. So, so that way the whole, that's, that's my goal. That's my vision, you know, what I'm trying to get to. And yep. then uh, is there any way we can, uh, is there any tools that you're going to be using to automate a lot of these process? Yes, actually, we're going to be looking at some of the Builderall tools. We have some fabulous tools inside of Builderall that will allow us to do some uh, Facebook auto answer and also Facebook auto posting where we can set up posting and schedule it out so that we don't have to post ourselves. We can set it up. Actually, a VA can set it up for us and it will do it automatically. So you can do like a month at a time and then just let it rip. So we'll go through those on that is Friday. Oh, great. So yeah, I'm a little bit ahead of you, I guess. So <laughs> That's and okay. If you guys, if you guys haven't seen it yet, you can do some pre investigation. Um, if you go into your tools, you can look at the Facebook auto answer tool and the Facebook auto post tool. Both of those are fabulous tools. And they're really actually, I love the Facebook auto answer. I call that the dumb bot. And uh, that's one that is a fabulous tool to use to get engagement. And then of course, the auto post is the one where you can schedule out like a month at a time and just let it rip out the, the content while you're uh, getting that sleep money that Barbie talks about. Um, and how, how much is, since we're talking about tools, how much this strategy uh, will we be able to apply the chatbot to it or would it integrate? Um, chatbots are going to be if you own your own, uh, like your own page. And uh, I hadn't really put a lot about chatbots in here. I was just going to kind of mention it since that's kind of its own boot camp. But mm -hmm. we will kind of touch on it a little bit. Um, I'll definitely kind of touch it and then move on because I really want to talk to you about getting into either creating your own groups or joining groups and then getting that organic stuff out there. And one last question um, on the content, because you were talking earlier about uh, sharing different things to different groups. So that way you're not uh, spamming. You don't look like you're spamming. You have mm -hmm. 25 videos. Do you rotate the content? So group one got this video and tomorrow I'm going to send them this video, but you already send it to group two. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how do you, uh, how do you manage the content that you're sharing? You're not overlapping, you're not looking like spamming, and you're staying organized. And can you reshare that same contact that the 25 videos is going to make it to the group one, 25 videos to group two, 25? You see what I'm saying, right? Yeah, but you're not going to do just videos. You're going to do I'll images. Videos, a picture, graphics. whatever I'm sharing. Can I share the yeah. same thing to group one, all of my contact to group one? So that way I'm look like. You can. you can, but you'll look like a little bit of a spammer. So um, you want to try to, you know, switch it up a little bit. And the easiest way to check that is to do a search for your own name and uh, see what you posted before. Oh, do you guys know how to search for your own name. Let me show you how to do that real quick, because that was such a good question. And it is easy to forget what you posted in what group. And obviously, you don't want to work that hard. So you're not keeping a spreadsheet of, all right, I posted this thing and this group and this thing and this group. So if you're not sure, all you need to do is go into, let's take a look at, um, see, stay-at-home moms. No, we'll go to, I'll go to the 90-day challenge. We'll see what I have posted in the 90-day challenge. So I'm just going to go into this group. I'm joined. I'm a member. And I can't remember for sure what I posted. So right here on this search bar, this is an in-group search. Okay. So all I have to do is type in my name and then hit enter, and it will pull up um, every time my name appears in any of the posts. So there's one of them, there's one where I was tagged, um, there's one where I was tagged, there's one that I created. So you can see that I can pull up a list real quick of what I've done in the group. Oh, that was one of my favorites right there. Um, but yeah, you can see everything I've done real quick, and especially if it's a video, it's gonna show right there. So if you don't see the video that you wanna share, then you can go ahead and share it. And it's a real quick, look, really, really quick look-see um, to see if you've already posted it. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I, let me get Tyree and then come on. Uh, question on, on uh, groups and pages, Shelly. Mm -hmm. um, how many is too many groups or pages to have of your own? Is there a certain, is there a certain number that's, that, that equates to having 
too many that you own? Or, uh, no, um, it just depends on what you can manage. Now, you individually, you may only be able to manage 25 <sighs> to 50 because that's a lot. I have like, I don't even know how many pages I have and how many groups I have. Um, but I'm going to teach you some techniques on different types of groups that you can own yourself. We're going to be covering that probably um, uh, Wednesday after we do bookmarking. Um, the first thing we're going to learn is how to post in other people's groups. And then the second thing is going to be how to manage our groups for organic marketing. Okay. So um, I'm going to teach you some different types of groups you can create and uh, why you would create them and what you would do with them. So that's, that's coming. And I can't wait to show you what I know because this is something I haven't given you guys. And uh, I can't wait to show it to you because all of you guys are going to go, what? <laughs> all right, Kanan? Yeah, uh, regarding uh, the topic that uh, Mr. Gabriel discussed, mm -hmm. what I'm doing is uh, I'm already a member of more than 380 groups. Mm -hmm. Everything is related with the niche of business people, business oriented, housework, how much, whatever the case may be, that they are related with the builder business. But mm -hmm. what I'm doing is that, according to, let me tell you the answer for that Gabriel question also, I'm using Trello to maintain all these things. It is a, with a, with a very, one of the very good and free open source project management system. And what I'm doing is that for every day, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, for each and every my card, I have separate cards on what are all the groups I post. I just need to drag one card to the next. That's and great. The second, yeah, second advantage that what I'm feeling is that when I'm using Trello, Trello has have app for uh, uh, iPhone or uh, Android, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. And whatever the synchronized, the app and this uh, system synchronized. So even when I'm a travel also, I'm able to make posts. That's great. Yes. That, that, that is why Trello. I'm using Trello yeah. for that. That's great. Trello is really, Trello. yeah, it's a really good tool. I use Trello as a calendar for myself to keep track of everything that I need to get done. But that's another way to use Trello is to keep track of the different posts that you want to do. And like Kanan said, he's got the stuff that he wants to post. So he just moves it to the next day and moves it to the next day. That's absolutely fabulous. So that's another great way to organize your stuff so that you can remember what you want to post. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit different way, and that's by using the uh, bookmark toolbar on your desktop and uh, and show you how to organize in uh, folders, and we'll actually do that tomorrow. Okay? So um, another thing about um, groups is that you want to make sure that uh, you're not only adding value, but you're creating relationships. So find out the movers and shakers inside these groups and tag them. Have you guys ever done that? Oh my gosh, do that. Oh my gosh, do that. So find the, the people that are being seen in the group and tag them in one of your messages. So you can say something like, hey, Judy Gunn, I saw your post on blah, 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 and it was really good, and I just wanted to give you a double thumbs up. What have you just done? You've created a relationship with that person, right? That person now is going to jump into your post and say, hey, thanks. I really appreciate it. And then somebody else is going to jump in and say, hey, I saw Judy's post. It was really good. And you've just created a dialogue and engagement that now they're seeing not only this person, but they're seeing you. You are related to that mover and shaker and candlestick maker, right? So tag someone that's a mover and shaker in the group that you see quite often and compliment them or add to something that they said or you know something like that make it genuine don't make it fake we, we're, we're all about being authentic but be authentic when you tag them and then you're creating that relationship and that elevates you in that group even more okay that's another really neat tool that I use every once in a while not always you don't want to do that every time, but when you do it, it's actually very powerful. Okay. Any other ideas, you guys, on how to organically uh, get involved in these groups? I know you guys probably do some of this. So um, have you seen some of these te techniques being used? Chip, go ahead. Oops. Um, <laughs> there is a piece of software. Um, 
called Missing Letter, mm -hmm. where if you have a blog post, it will know that you've just posted that and it sucks it up and then pulls little quotelets right out of it and adds uh, graphics. You can approve all of that. And then it will, it will, over the course of a year, drip them out to whatever Facebook page or group or Twitter oh, or uh, Instagram that you've set up. That's cool. And that's called Missing Letter? Missing Letter, but the last E is missing. So oh, it's okay. Missing Letter. Got it. I'll check that one out. Another thing that you can use to make your post kind of stand out, because in a lot of these groups, you guys, it's all about standing out. And that is you can use uh, special characters. Uh, and I've got two resources for those that I'm going to put into the boot camp replay area. So you can actually bold and italicize and underline. And, and Facebook has actually added this now. So you can actually do it anyway. But it's not as expensive as the tools that I'm going to give you. But um, let me see if I can, I can do that in here. Hold on. Let me do a new post. So here is... Um, hello from the boot campers. All right, so if I highlight, let me see if I can do this. There it is. So we've got the um, option to bold and italicize in Facebook now. So you definitely want to use those to kind of stand out. A lot of people don't know that Facebook has added that. But then there's also, um, let me see if I can find it real quick. Hold on just a second. I think I have it in my important builder information, but I don't know. There it is right there. So this is the resource that I'm going to give you. And it allows you to do this type of text along with character text. Um, it's called Fancy Text Generator. Um, and it's actually really cool because it allows you to do this different kind of text. And it also allows you to kind of stand out in the crowd. So I will give you guys this link in the resources and you can uh, test it out to see if it gets engagement. Um, and also, if you use it, give them this resource as well. So do you like the text that I use? You can get it for free to go right here. So are you giving value? Yeah, absolutely. So you want to share that and give them value as well so they could do that as well. Um, and you know the you know the story with that, right? Um, this is why I give away everything that I have. It's because 95% of the people aren't going to use it anyway. And then out of the 5% that are left, 2.5% are going to fail and they'll blame it on me and tell, and tell people, well, she didn't give me the whole thing. She just gave me a little piece of it. So really, my only competition is 2.5%. And I'm a hard worker, so I'll probably stay ahead of them forever. So it's okay to give this stuff away, right? So this is a resource that's absolutely wonderful that when you go into a group and you post and somebody says, hey, I really like your font, you can say, Whoop, here it is. You can use it too. And then you're giving them value. And again, you start to become a valued member of that group. Okay. All right, so here's your homework for tonight. I don't want to keep you much more than an hour. So here's your homework for tonight. I want you guys to find five groups and five pages. I want you to like five pages and join five groups. Okay, that's your homework for tonight. And I want you to post. Now, in, Facebook, in the pages, you're going to have to be responding to post, right? So in each of those five pages, I want you to respond with value. You're not selling builder all. I just want you to respond with value. Okay. In each of the groups, I want you to start a post that is automatically full of value. Give them some value. And in all 10 of those posts, so the five in pages and the five in groups, I want them all different. I don't want them all the same. That's probably the hardest thing that you'll do, right? Yeah, finding 10 different ways to post. But if you, if you start doing it now, you'll find that it's actually not that hard, right? My, my fingers fly across the keyboard because that's my moment to be like super creative, right? Anything goes. And I don't have to promote anything. I just have to give value. 
right? So I may say, I may respond to something on a Facebook post. Wow, that was a great post. I, I saw something the other day on such and such a site that was saying almost the same exact thing. Here's the link to it, right? That's good. That's good enough, right? And then in your groups, you can um, start a post. And you guys have got so many resources in Builderall, you can start a post that talks about the value of a chatbot in your business. Hey, you guys, what do you think about chatbots in business? Do you think they're really valuable? Because I'm trying to consider whether I want to add one to my website or not. What do you think? Right? So five pages, five groups. Go ahead, Chip. Um, just to remind people that the t they can find out what kinds of things they might post by looking on your event calendar on Builderall. Oh, that's, that's right. Thank you for reminding me of that. Um, on the event calendar inside of Builderall, I've actually got a social media planner. And if you'll take a look at it, it's got a, an idea for a social media post for every single day of the month. So um, it's got like three weeks up there now. I'm actually going to do some editing this week to put the next two months up. But you can look at what's up there, and that'll give you some ideas as well. Also, if you are interested in doing quotes, um, let me go to the event calendar, and I'll show you some of the things that are in there. So I'll log in as Tabitha, my daughter. Um, <laughs> see if we can get signed in. Yay, and I'll go to Builder All Business and then down to Event Calendar. It's the second item. And if I click Event Calendar, it comes up with a calendar with all the events on it, which it happens to have the boot camp at the wrong time because we had to change it because of training that was coming up. But um, each day has a social media planner idea. So for June the 24th, the idea was sign up day. And it says create a post with a link to sign up for a newsletter, email list, a webinar, or a meeting. So if you've got a newsletter you want to give out, then create a real quick sign up page and get them to sign up for that newsletter. Um, the next one, quote of the day. It says pick a quote from the resource area and post your thoughts about it. Click here to find some examples. So you can click right on here and it will take you um, to a page. It says 108 famous quotes on life, love, and success. So you can actually find some quotes here and post them and tell them what you think about that quote. Okay. So um, it's just about everything in here. If there's resources needed, then the resource um, link is there. I think there is um, share an obscure holiday um, right here. Uh, obscure holiday. So if you click here. Let's see what obscure holiday is for today. Today is July the 15th. So let's see if we can find it. Let's see if my link works. That's it right there. Quote of the day. So we'll find it this way. So let's go to obscure holiday. And here we go. So 2018 through 2019 daily calendar holidays by month. So we are in July. And we're on the 15th. <laughs> so I found a good one. Be a dork day. <laughs> That's great. Um, Cal Appreciation Day and tapioca pudding day. So all of those, to me, those are all great ones to put on as an obscure holiday. They'd be so funny and just a way to really have fun and post inside groups. So obscure holidays are another way to actually um, create a post, get some engagement. And again, if you, if you put a post that says um, national hug a cow day, <laughs> that's probably gonna get your name remembered. <laughs> <laughs> so again just a, so many different ways to engage you guys and i'm so excited because hopefully you guys got some good ideas so five pages five groups post in those and then i want to hear what you guys did tomorrow i want you to tell me if you got any immediate results 
um, what kind of engagement you got, all that kind of stuff. I want to hear back from you by tomorrow. And here's why I want to hear back from you by tomorrow. Because a lot of you guys are going to experience immediate engagement. Okay? It's funny. When we kind of do this, we're kind of scared to get out there and do it. Right? But the reality is once you get out there and do it, it's, it's shocking how much engagement you can actually get. So get out there and do it. And then I want to hear tomorrow what your results are. Um, Tyree, you got a question or a comment? Yes, I, I wanted to go back. Wanted to go back over that homework. I was trying to write it down. I know it's uh, find five pages and five groups, and I think you said like the five pages, join the four, five groups, and post in the five groups. Yeah, and and respond to posts on the pages that you like. Okay. 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 So each of the five pages you're gonna like. And you're going to respond somehow to a, a post in each of those pages. And then in the five groups, you're going to join. And then you're going to post your own post in those five groups. Everybody got it? I have a question. Okay. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, so is there, is there any way I can... Like um, there was a time I posted something about um, my neighbor's dog and I had a lot of engagement, like over 900, which is wow. like the first time for me. And then I, I, I wished I, I, was able, I was able to like, if not promote something, like just get some people to go back to my page or my profile and just check on it and maybe they could just add me up. So the question is, is there any way I can like, get something like that from a post that I've done in the past. <laughs> I would I would repeat it. I would look at the way you structured that post and see if you can find something that's really similar to that post and and try it again. You won't get a viral post every post, but look at the look at what you put together that people responded to and look at their responses, how they engage with you and see what was the trigger, what was the thing about that post and see if you can recreate it, not the exact thing, but recreate it in some kind of way. Does that make okay. sense? So does that mean that I can't do anything? Yeah, anything. Anything, anything. <laughs> Chip, go ahead. These posts should be shared to the 60 day challenge too, shouldn't they? To the, to the 90 day challenge? 90 yeah. Day challenge. yeah. Heck yeah, if you're posting, you need to share them. Absolutely, because you want to be content. You want to create content. Actually, with these, though, um, the content that we're creating for the 90-day post is going to be like from your own group or your own page. Um, you're trying to create content for yourself. So that's more of what we're going to do tomorrow when we talk about creating our own pages and our own groups. This one is really posting on somebody else's page, somebody else's group. Okay. So that was a really good question because exactly what we're going to do tomorrow is what you want to share to the 90 day challenge. And if those of you that are not in the 90 day challenge, um, our new person that we brought into builder all David Sharp, he challenged us at the mansion to do 90 straight days of content, our own content, whether we put that content on YouTube, Facebook, whatever it is, Create 90 days of content. Every single day, create some piece of content and get it out there. So the 90-day challenge is for you to kind of um, keep track and be held accountable for those 90 days, right? So if you create a piece of content somewhere, share it into the group and then mark what day you're on. So if you're on day one, if today's day one, just mark it as day one and share that into the group. And the cool thing about it is there's so many people sharing that you're going to get ideas about content yourself. So by going through and looking what other people are posting, you can kind of go, oh, man, I really like that idea. I'm going to use that idea and post it onto my YouTube channel or post it to my Facebook group. So it'll give you some really good ideas about what kind of content to post uh, for your own groups or your own pages. OK, so you're more than welcome to join that group. Um, just type in Bilber All 90 Day and it will pull up. Okay. Any other questions, you guys? Look, I'm so proud. I only kept you for an hour and 15 minutes today. <laughs> so I get a gold star sticker right here. <laughs> Yay me. 
So we're going to go ahead and jump into tomorrow uh, some more Facebook organic marketing, but doing it with your own pages and your own groups. So we're going to talk about how do we create those pages? How do we create those groups? How do we create engagement? How do we invite them, pe invite people? How do we keep them engaged? Um, and how do we get seen as the expert in those pages and groups? So we're going to talk all about that tomorrow. OK. All right, you guys, I'm going to let you go. Don't forget about your homework. And don't forget that the replay is going to be on the boot camp channel. And I will see you guys again tomorrow. And thank you so much, guys. You are awesome.